So in the last episode we moved bases and we're now built inside of this mountain over here which I want to tunnel into. There's a lot of reasons why tunneling into a mountain is good but before we do that we ended up accepting the hardest quest I've ever seen in RimWorld and now we have three clusters of mechanoids just sitting outside of our base. To start off this episode we got a wandering trader trying to trade with us and that's not going to be good for them because they're about to run right into these mechanoids. Among this trader is Doomguy from my first series and he's got really OP stats and traits. I put a few more characters from previous series into the world and they'll just pop up at random times like right now. I'm hoping Doomguy doesn't die here and maybe we could rescue him and convince him to join us. Are they gonna avoid this mechanoid cluster? It doesn't really look like the mechanoids notice that they're there but they are shooting at them. I wonder if they can make it by and not even fight them. Oh there they go they're engaged and Doomguy is going in or I guess he's stunned now. I think Tony's stunning them. Tony's maybe an undercover mechanoid. Ooh, it looks like they hit the battery and it started a chain reaction, which blew up most of the mechanoid buildings. And it looks like their alpacas went down, so all their goods just are laid out on the ground. We could go yoink all those. I'm seeing 36 components. There's a fire on the ground too. We gotta get out there and rescue those goods. Well, a few things burned up, but the components are safe. We're definitely gonna take all those 36 components. There's also an EMP launcher here, as well as some flak pants. That's really nice. A lot of meat too. We're kind of low on meat, so we'll take all that. Some meals too. We secured all the goods, and a while later we're getting double raided. Well, kind of triple raided. There's two groups of tribes people coming in, and this group is about to engage this mechanoid cluster. There's not that many turrets left up though. There's only, it looks like four turrets, and maybe this group can take out these four turrets. That would be nice. We got a bunch of savages invading our main choke point, and we just headshot one of them with shootings. Charge lance, so that's good. We're not fighting these guys in our choke point because they actually all have have range weapons for the most part so we're fighting them at range and we just killed another one which is great these guys over here are working on our wind turbine and they're about to knock it down stone got tagged finally in the leg but he should survive or she rather let's have stone charge this dude yeah there we go it looks like a lot of them are fleeing and ooh, it's panda lee from the dsp series we'll try to take her out can we just snipe her really fast now here's where it's going to get a bit weird. So there's currently six mechanoids that have breached, three pikemen down here, and we're going to try to take these guys on first. To help us do that, we're going to have shooting use call royal aid, and that's going to call in a trooper squad. And we're going to assist this trooper squad in taking out these pikemen. We're going to have shooting come over, and stone is going to come over here too. And we're going to try to get an angle on these guys. The pikemen don't seem to notice us, and oh, okay, they notice us. We're going to hide. Well, it's shooting in stone, try to get an angle. Shooting in stone are kind of right behind these guys, and I don't think they see us. And yeah, stone is just destroying that one. Shootings also get an angle. Oh, it turned around, but it died. And yeah, these guys are a really good distraction for us. There's actually an embrasure right here. I didn't even see that. We could use that as a thing to look through. Oh, and it turned around. Don't hit us, please. We'll just shoot at it because yeah we have the embrasures covered and all those pikemen are dead. Now we just got to deal with all these lancers. There's four of them and these guys have way better range than us or way better damage at long range than us. So we should actually probably rush them even though it doesn't seem like it's a great idea to rush into mechanoids. Oh and shooting got tagged. That's not good. Shooting got tagged again really hard. He dropped his weapon because he got tagged so hard. We need stone to like just get in the melee range of this thing maybe. And we got mad rats. We did survive the mechanoid invasion, but I don't know if we're going to survive this mad rat invasion. This thing looks quite terrifying. Throughout all that, shooting was actually badly wounded, and I don't know if we're going to be able to save him here. Or actually, never mind, we were able to save him, thankfully. His left arm got shot off though, which is not good. That is really not going to do well for his manipulation, and we need to find him another arm. So here's the base after all that carnage. There is a bunch of dead villagers, mechanoids just lying everywhere, blood everywhere. And even like to the southeast, there's a bunch of fire. The Royal Aid decided to engage these turrets to the southeast and they did nothing because there's a bullet shield around these turrets. This advanced component is about to burn too, that's unfortunate. Melee went into a daze and decided to go out beyond the walls and try to retrieve some pemmican that some of these dead people dropped earlier. And Melee is now getting absolutely destroyed. And now Melee is down. We do have to try to save him because apparently medical is his lover and if he dies she's gonna be really sad animals is mounted and we're gonna have him try to save melee oh god run 
I think he made it out. Okay, wow, phew. Millie's only got four hours left though, and our medic is currently down. But I guess 110 from animals actually saved him. He just needed one bandage in the neck and he's good. So currently only stone has a really solid gear set, and at Fenron they have a samurai power armor. It increases melee dodge chance, which is not going to benefit us really, because we have no one that's all that amazing at melee. And even if we did have somebody that's good at melee, we need to give this power armor to a ranged user like stone or shooting, because it gives almost 100% protection to everything that's not the head. And like it doesn't mean they're immune to damage, there is armor piercing damage and a lot of guns have armor piercing damage. But that will make them take much less damage and like shooting's arm probably wouldn't have gotten shot off if he was wearing the samurai power armor. It's going to cost 4k and that's pretty much everything we got back at base. We scrounged up all of our goods, a lot of statues, and that right there is almost a full gear set. It just has no helmet. About nine days after that double raid, we got yet another double event. Gerardus from the Smoky Alligators crash landed right in front of these turrets. We got 14 hours to rescue him before he bleeds out. And one thing we do have going for us is there is a little bit of cover. I'm thinking if we swoop someone around all the way out side of this auto inferno turret and we line ourselves between the auto turret and this wall we could actually do the same with this auto charge blaster turret as well and we could potentially get them without having to deal with these two turrets unfortunately i think we will still have to tank this auto inferno turret and this mini slugger turret this auto inferno turret in the back as well as this auto charge blaster turret also might have an angle on gerardus so we might be running into four turrets trying to rescue this guy he is really good though despite his age being 61 he's pretty and he's a fast learner as is everyone but he's got aided intellectual and a minor passion for it and that's another researcher that can help us research techs which would be really nice so we're definitely going to make an effort to rescue him. The second event we got literally seconds later was another mech cluster dropped and this one dropped in with a psychic suppressor which is pretty nasty. It lowers the consciousness of a certain gender which this one's male down to 50% so they do everything at only half the speed. Basically while this thing is up males are completely useless. Not to mention this cluster has a mortar shield so we can't actually bombard it with mortars which is fine we currently have no chem fuel anyway, so we can't even make mortars. One thing we do have going for us is all this stuff is dormant, and it's going to activate in 8.3 days. But since they're all sleeping, we might be able to build out and maybe we could construct some kind of embrasure system a bit closer to the psychic suppressor. To assist us in rescuing this guy, we're going to enlist the help of some animals we've tamed. We can pretty much tame anything now that animals has 18 in animals, aside from like thrombos. Two rats, two boars, a muffalo, and a squirrel hopefully will be enough. Using the zoning system, we can make these animals go wherever we want. We could literally make them charge right into the enemy turrets if we wanted to. We're going to put a little zone all the way over here. So now our animals are going to charge across into this new zone, and we're going to use them as a distraction. And bad start already. Stone's donkey apparently left us, but oh well, we're not going to worry about it. Stone's just going to go and we got to go. And we're getting raided. It's okay though, if Stone makes it out, we're good. And Stone's actually tanking so much with that armor. And I think Stone actually made it. Wait, did we actually end up destroying one of their turrets somehow, by the way? Okay, wait, we can pull Muffalo 6 out of there. Muffalo 6 is probably dead, but maybe he'll be able to make it out. Or she. And she's going the wrong way. I don't know why she's going that way. We had her go back to base. Okay, well, she's dead. And it looks like the raiders are actually going through these turrets. We could have just waited for these raiders, actually. They would have uh, probably taken the turrets out for us. We actually just helped the raiders there. We took the turrets out for the raiders. The turrets are just... Like, you can see the power of these turrets. Like, they're actually destroying these raiders, though. And it already killed, like, three of them. Two of them. And how are these people making it in? I'm so confused as to what happened here. I guess this wall burned down or something? Well, these raiders are breaching our base. We're having everyone just run. And we'll have Stone come over here, who isn't that wounded, by the way. Um, and somebody got a disease. Hopefully it wasn't Stone. They got infected, rather. And we killed that raider. Good. Shooting did take some damage. Shooting's tanking a little bit. And Armadillo is riding a llama. Oh, we got him tagged though, that's really good. We need to kill Armadillo. He's getting some good hits on shooting. But he's almost dead. And we got him. We gotta take out this llama. Oh, and they're running. Okay, that works. Rat and Queaky are gonna try to escape through this direction. And we don't want to really fight them with shooting in stone. Because yeah, they're gonna shoot at us while they run. That's just how running gun works. And we killed one of them, that's good. It would actually be nice to be able to capture Rat. We're just gonna have Stone try to melee her, because Stone does have the Samurai Power Armor. 
and therefore is better in melee. Oh, we killed it. Throughout all that, Stone only got a bunch of cracks and bruises and only got one small wound that's bleeding. So that Samurai Power Armor is working really well, at least against villagers with bows. Her HP is really low though, and if she took any more damage, she'd go into Pain Shock pretty quickly. Because yeah, with all those injuries, she's at severe pain. I'm not sure what pain level they need to have to go into Pain Shock. I think it's kind of just a chance. And by the way, apparently the person that got the infection was Gerardus, but we got a 10 on him and he should survive. A couple of the mechanoids woke up and okay well that one hit our trap. This scyther is really wounded now and there's only one more mechanoid that's going to attack us. And I'm not actually sure if these embrasures are going to work in front of this. Okay yeah the embrasures are working good I think. And yep we got we got these turrets working too behind this embrasure. These turrets are a part of a mod and they're fairly advanced but they required a lot of research. Like the shredder turret is a part of this more vanilla turrets tech and in order to even get here it required 6k research. There's just one more pikeman coming in and this thing actually has really long range. I don't know if I can outrange our turrets, Never mind. And yeah, we have really good cover behind these embrasures. And we're shredding this pikeman. It's really low now, one more hit. One more volley and it should go down. Or two more volleys. Is this thing invincible or what? Its health has been at like one fourth for so long now. Okay, this thing just doesn't want to go down. And there it goes, finally. So yeah, our defensive situation is working out pretty well. We're also constructing a mud moat here, and it slows the walking speed down to 25%. So whenever they get in here, they're going to start walking really slow. Our defenses look kind of OP for now, but eventually we'll start getting attacked by many more enemies, and we'll see if they can hold out. Speaking of getting raided by a massive force, a few hours later we got this quest. A 34-year-old scout named Harding is calling from nearby. She admits she profaned a peace ritual between the Black Otter Rego and the Untiolbum Pack. She will join us, however, if we accept her, both the Black Otter Rigo and the Untiobum Pact will raid us in four days. They're both extremely hostile to us, so it's not like we care about having good relations with them. And so yeah, we'll accept this quest. And Harding is actually extremely good. She's got a burning passion for shooting, 10 in shooting, and she's a jogger, so she's really fast. That's the fastest trait in the game, and she's also pretty, and so everyone should like her and enjoy interacting with her. While all that was going down, this Psychic Suppressor has been making our male call and it's pretty useless as they all have only 50% consciousness so everyone's just doing stuff a lot slower and things are just not getting done as quickly around camp and so we're gonna have stone open these doors and we're gonna hold both these doors open hopefully we can get out okay yeah they're dormant so I forgot about that but from back here we can start shooting at this psychic suppressor and yeah that woke them up and yeah this thing's actually shooting at us but it's not hitting us because we're behind the embrasure. We've almost killed this thing. It's down to 40%. 33 now. And stone actually has a shield too. The samurai power armor actually just got tagged. And okay, wait, we killed it. Let's run now. At the very end though, stone did get tagged, which was kind of funny. The power armor shield blocked the last attack though. And yeah, these mechanoids are now going to attack us. They also have a couple mech assemblers that we didn't kill. And this one on the left is going to make a pikeman in 0.3 days. And on the one on the right is going to make a scyther in 0.3 days. And I think they'll just continually make mechs until we destroy them. But that actually might not be a bad thing. Assuming we can just farm them, that's actually a good thing because we can disassemble the mechs for some nice stuff. While we're waiting for the mechs to attack, Gerardus's infection in his leg is now extreme. The infection's at 88%. However, his immunity is at 95, mainly because we got really good tens on it. The last 10 quality was 60% because we did use herbal medicine, which we have been growing by the way. We do have a herbal medicine field. And so Gerard will survive this infection. We had Social talk to Gerardus just once and because Social had inspired recruitment, he immediately joined us and did not eat any convincing. So that's one more researcher we're going to have right now. Back at the main choke point, we got a couple more pikemen coming in. And this pikeman is out of range of our steel military grade turret. However, this other one's not. We also kind of got to be careful too, the steel shredder turret's actually getting kind of low, it's at 56. They are hitting shots, and oh no, it's at 44. Inelex over here, we'll just have her repair it. And she's doing a pretty good job actually. The only thing is, if this thing does get destroyed, I think it will blow up. Actually, I don't know if the shredder turrets blow up. I know the military grade ones do, and that's why we have a wall separating them, because we don't want one to blow up, and then it will blow up the other one. Another modification I did to the base is I added a inner layer where, like, you can put people here if we're not getting attacked by anything that's too serious. Like, this site there is not anything that we have to worry about too much. And shooting's actually doing pretty good still, by the way. He only has one arm, 
we are still on a quest to find another arm but yeah we took that thing out with just shooting and only having one arm is actually not affecting him that much it does lower his accuracy by quite a bit but you would think it would like lower his aiming time only having one arm but no he aims just as quick as other people it's just that like at a distance of 30 range for example he's only 60 percent accurate despite having 20 shooting skill versus stone at 30 range is 71 percent accurate and stone only has 14 shooting skill so yeah it is hurting his accuracy a bit we got the other pikemen coming in and as you can see we walled this side off so they can't shoot at us through these embrasures oh animals get out of there oh no our bunny no mr hare oh wait that's not even our hair that's our apaca though animals get out of there And whoa, we got a nice hit on that pikeman. I'm not sure what exactly killed it. The headshot wasn't like a full blow off its head headshot. So I don't really know what that was all about. But the main thing is crafting can disassemble it. And we got 20 steel, 5 plasteel, and a component. And plasteel and components are actually pretty hard to come by. And having extra steel is always really nice too. Social got that inspiration earlier. And Artistic got two inspired creativity inspirations back to back. And she ended up making this legendary marble grand sculpture, which sells for for 2400 it's extremely beautiful it has 4300 beauty but if we leave this back at base it boosts our wealth by quite a bit and we don't want that so we're gonna sell it off we're also gonna sell off a bunch of these smaller sculptures some extra weapons we picked up and that right there is 3k silver we're next gonna have shooting and social venture out to emisa and if we want to trade with them it requires the title of knight which shooting does currently have it's gonna take us 0.9 days to get there though because we are kind of going through some mountainous terrain we're not really going on the road at all but there is also median that's pretty close by. I'm guessing these guys are going to have some pretty nice stuff. The only thing I am worried about though is I don't know if they're going to make it back in time for the raid. We accepted the raid quest 1.3 days ago, so that means they're going to raid us in 2.7 days. So hopefully shooting and social can get out there, trade with those guys, possibly get us some really nice stuff and then bring it back before we get raided. And we'll be doing that in the next episode. I want to thank you all for watching and I will see you then.